Hello friends, how are you all? Summertime is sort of wearing me down and so I wanted to paint something easygoing in my sketchbook and just have an enjoyable painting session. This painting allowed me just that, chill and take it easy. But I also wanted to show you new paints. These are called Supervision and the name of the set is Ocean Paradise. I will link them down below if you want to check them out. I was sent these for testing and I was very curious about them because they are unusual watercolors made for people just like me, I guess, who like things that granulate, shimmer, contain multiple pigments to be able to add that extra texture and wildness into my paintings. These paints actually contain not only multiple pigments, but they also granulate and shimmer at the same time. So they're like everything mixed together, which might be a, an interesting thing, but at the same time might be too much of a good thing. Well, I will let you be the judge of that, but let's check them out. Honestly, this woke the child in me that just wants to play around with the new shimmery object. The shinier, the better. I adored almost every shade in there and thought of different paintings that I could make with them. Take this video as my first impressions of them though. I only made this one painting so far and only used half of this in the process and my color scheme for the study was rather limited as you might have noticed in the intro. Oh, and the set has a very appealing name, the Ocean Paradise, but the actual shades don't have names, only numbers. Is it just me or do you also prefer when colors have names that reflect their personality almost? I immediately started to think of different names that I could give to these paints, but it was kind of hard to refer to them by numbers during a Patreon tutorial, which by the way is available on my Patreon in real time. I include my sketching process there and a sketch to download if you wish to paint along. As these colors are more for the embellishment of the painting, I also used a limited palette of Sennelier watercolors for the skin tones and the base. Here are five of the supervision colors that I picked for this portrait and on the other porcelain plate there are my five Sennelier paints. Here I'm painting the base for the skin. I don't just have one approach for every painting, I have to always decide on a strategy and today I went for the easiest route by painting a rather flat wash and then lifting the pigment off the areas that show some more light. I then tried to add a bit more intense skin tone into the wash that was still wet and sort of shortened the route to a finished skin base. Sometimes the painting is not about the details of the face and in this case everything that's in the lights is very much simplified because the interest of this study is why I decided to paint it is in what sort of atmosphere does the shadow create and also the simple graphic statement I guess which I think I want to hunt for a little more in my work instead of aiming for complexity. When I had the skin at least a bit defined, it was a good idea to lay down some darker washes for the rest of the space, mostly the background. I do not try to separate parts of the painting too much if I don't have to, and rather unify them with washes of transparent paint. It is something that works for me to unify the painting and if I need to separate spots from one another, then I can always add shadows on top of that and create hard edges. But this painting was just a face that's been lighter than everything else and the rest could fall back nicely. I used a bunch of those bluish and purplish supervision paints and that gave the background lovely shimmer. To create deep darks I had to reach for paints grey, that one was immensely helpful to create the deepest shadows and make the face pop. Purple color in this grayish form is so calming to me, I love to combine it with just a hint of warmth. Well, in this case, the skin tones did the job just fine to create that warm versus cool harmony that I was looking for. But when I get a chance to add a bright dark red into this kind of purple dream background, then I usually go with it. And here is my chance to add some red. It didn't stick though too much, it faded once it was dry and I used my soft flat brush to blend the colors together. I'm 
I'm so eager to paint in the cast shadows. These are directly crossing her face and it's such a dramatic moment. I love painting them. But here is a tip for a watercolorist who has never done it before. Two things. First, you have to finish the base completely. So ensure that you are okay with where you placed the reds and skin tones. You won't be able to correct that after you have the shadow pattern painted. The second is that Try, if possible, to paint it in one go and let the watercolor dry naturally, forming that nice hard edge on this shadow. It will look great if the shadow is really one silhouette and not split into a few parts, which usually happens if parts of the shadow dry out as you paint. Of course, it doesn't have to be perfect, so no pressure, it's just a tip, but I try to be quick about it and rather compromise on the actual shape of the silhouette than compromising on make it in one go. So I rather have not the silhouette split than having a perfect shape, if that makes any sense. There was a curtain, I think, on the reference photo that I used with a very subtle pattern and this was the actual hard part of the entire process to make this delicate yet not break the overall light and shadow simple statement. I did fail here because I kept on correcting this area a couple of times once I had it too much covered in shadow and the other times I had a pattern too contrasty which took away from the face and kept splitting my picture apart. This is hard to do with watercolor and be as subtle as you wish because it gives you a hard time when you try to correct it. In my Strathmore watercolor journal, lifting of the pigment is possible, which is great and I can allow some lightness back into the picture, but the texture that this paper creates when I use the lifting is not so nice. It looks patchy and rough. Unlike when I use cotton paper, it doesn't matter so much here, it's just a sketch and once the sketchbook is finished, which will be in three more sketches, I want to remake some of the sketches to a larger format and on a better paper, obviously, and I already know that this one will be so challenging. But I fell in love with this motif and I want to paint it again, I really want to try to give it my all. By the way, I was inspired by a beautiful photograph. It is on my Pinterest board, that's where I keep my references for drawing and painting and I will link it down below in case you want to check that out and also some of my other inspirations that I keep on that board. Even though this study has such a limited palette on the first glance, I love the effect that the supervision paints allowed me to achieve. It is a subtle granulation and shimmer that made it look so very mysterious and calm. And dear viewer, I know that sometimes it might feel that my goal in life is to convince you to buy tons of paints, uh, to be able to paint better, and we all know that that's not the case. I mean, art supplies are just material. It's a beautiful material that has its limits, but allows for a lovely creative expression, but only you know the best what you need to express yourself. For some of you, the best thing is just a limited palette so that you don't get overwhelmed. And some might feel the need to make an entire collection of colors of all kinds of personalities. And when you yet don't know what you are looking for, the best thing you can do is to get a sketchbook and try one page every week, explore and set no limits. This is such a beautiful way, not only to get to know your own preferences in art, but also to get to know yourself.
I'll be exploring this set in my future works. There is a rest of the colors that for now I did not include, but I'm so eager to try, especially those greens. One color that I liked the most that I used in this painting, mostly for the pattern, was a very pastel version, was similar to lavender and also consisted of metallic elements. Since it doesn't have a name, I can't quite refer uh, which one it was, but I will think of a name and uh, will tell you maybe in my next video. I was surprised by liking this color so much because it is very opaque and I usually like transparent watercolors. From these you really can't expect a lot of transparency because metallic paint usually shows on top and I'll be using them to embellish patterns, fabric and so on. I just want to say thank you so much for sending me these. I really so far am I'm enjoying using them in my works and I'll be happy to see you in one of my videos that are maybe upcoming maybe next week how about that uh, anyway have a great rest of the summer and I'll see you sometime bye